Hello and welcome to the Carl Lewis Academy YouTube channel. In today's video, we will be discussing about DHCP. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. So we will begin our video by understanding a little bit about DHCP and then we will go right into how we can configure a DHCP server. So DSCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And the definition right here on Google, which is from the Microsoft website, it says that a DSCP in a client server environment, a DSCP is a server that is responsible for automatically assigning IP addresses to devices that are on the network. And apart from assigning IP addresses automatically, the DSCP server also will assign information like the default gateway of the network to the client devices, as well as information like the subnet map and even the DNS address of the network as well. Then the next thing is, why would you need to set up a DSCP server? If you remember in our previous video, before we join the Windows 11 computer to our domain, we went to the network properties of the Windows 11 client computer and we manually assign an IP address. And I can remember that the IP address we assigned was 172.30.15.2. And then we also set up a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And we went on to also configure the DNS IP address on the client computer. Because we had just one computer, it was easy to set up those information manually. But imagine for a second if you work in a company that has, let's say, 50 computers or 100 computers. What if the company has 1,000 computers? It would take you a lot of time to walk from computer to computer setting up manual IP addresses on those computers. That's number one. Number two, there is a very likely chance of you making a mistake of assigning multiple devices with the same IP address. And when that happens, those devices will not be able to communicate unless that issue is resolved. And then now you will have to go from computer to computer to see which two computers are having the same IP address. This is when DSCP comes in. So DSCP will resolve all of that for us and then we don't have to go from computer to computer and manually assign an IP address and other information on the computer like the default gateway, the subnet mask, and the DNS address, all of those things will be taken care of by the DSCP server. With that being said, let us now look at how we can configure a DSCP server. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to minimize my browser and then I will go to my Windows Server 2022. When I'm logged into my Windows Server 2022, the first thing I will do is to click on Start and then click on Server Manager. So when the Server Manager window opens, I will just click on S to close this and then I will come here to Tools. When we click on Tools and look in the list, we will see that there is no DSCP, we have defragment 
and optimized drives. We have disk cleanup and we have DNS. So th these names are arranged in alphabetical order. So because we haven't configured DSCP on this computer yet, or I should say we haven't installed the DSCP services yet, so we don't have DSCP. So what we want to do now is to go to manage and click on add roles and features. So I'll click on that. So when I click on add roles and features, the add roles and features wizard opens. So I'm just going to click on next. So this is similar to how we install the Active Directory domain services first on the server and before we configure Active Directory. So it's a similar process. So we will keep it to the very first option that is selected by default, which is the role base or feature based installation. So that is selected by default. We will keep it there and we'll click on next. Because we only have one server on our network, that server is automatically selected in the list. So we'll just keep it to that server and we will click on next. So now when we come to this screen where we have to select the server role that we want to install, we will just click on DSCP server. So we'll click in a little checkbox to activate that option. So when we do that, it will automatically tell you that these features are needed so that DSCP can function properly. So these things are automatically selected for you. And then at the bottom, we have include management tools if applicable. That is also selected automatically. So you just want to leave those selection done for you and you just click add features because it's going to just simply add all of the features that are needed for that server role to function properly. So we'll click on next. And then this next screen is the features screen. Because from the previous step, it automatically selected the features for us. So we don't have to select anything on the screen. We can simply just click next. So this brings us to the confirmation screen for our DSCP role installation. DSCP doesn't require you to restart the computer. So you can just check this if you are not sure if the computer needs to be restarted, it's going to restart. If it doesn't, it will not restart. So we can just check that and click on install. And then this will install the DSCP server role on this Windows Server 2022. So I'm going to pause the video and allow it to install. And once that is done, we can come back and continue with our configuration of DSCP. All right, so we have successfully completed the installation of the DSCP server role. The next thing we wanna do is to click on complete DSCP configuration. So I'm just going to click on that. And the post installation configuration wizard for the DSCP will open up. We get a brief description telling us about what are the things that are going to be done on the server during this post installation configuration. So we'll just click on next. Because I'm logged into my Windows Server 2022 as the administrator, so it automatically pick up the domain name as well as the username that is logging. And because we know that this administrator user has the right and privilege to perform this authorization, so we will just keep it to use that credential. If we have another user that has the rights and privilege to authorize the DSCP server in Active Directory, we will use the second option. But for now, we only have the administrator user. 
So we'll just keep it to this first option and then we will click on commit. So it's just going to give us a summary and then we just click on close. And then the next thing we do is to click on close and then that closes the installation wizard. Now, when we come back to our server manager dashboard and we click on tools, we see we have DHCP in the list, which we didn't have before. So we will click on DHCP and the DHCP window will open. So, so far what we have done, we have installed the DHCP server role on our Windows Server 2022, but we haven't done any other additional configuration yet. So we need to come to the DHCP window and perform those configuration. So I'm just going to click on this and expand it a little bit just for you to see the full domain name. So when we look on the left, we see DHCP and below DHCP, we see the name of our server right below there. To the very left, there is a little arrow that is there. So I'm just going to click that and it's going to expand. So when it comes to setting up IP addresses, we have two options. We have IP version four as well as IP version six. In this video, we will just be focusing on IP version four. So I'm just going to click on IP version four. I can also expand IP version four and you'll see we have several options, policy, as well as filters. But for now, I will just keep the IP version four active and it tells us that we do not have a scope. We need to add a scope. So the next logical question is, what is a scope? It tells us a little bit about a, a scope right here. It says that a scope is simply a range of IP addresses assigned to computers requesting a dynamic IP. In order to create a scope, we can right click on IPv4 and we come to a new scope or we could go to the action menu as is stated in the middle of the screen and come to new scope. So either option works for us. So I will just click on new scope and then the new scope wizard will pop up. So I'm just going to click on next. We will need now to put in a name for our DSCP scope. So let's say this is our main office and then we have also maybe one or two branch offices. So we can probably just name our scope main office so that we know that this scope is the scope that is responsible for assigning IP addresses to our main office devices. So I will just put that. You can put a description if you like. I will just click on next. Then the next thing is to put a range. So we need to specify a starting IP address and an any IP address that the DSCP server will use for distribution on our network. So I'm just going to stick to the IP addresses that we are using. So we are using 172.30.15. So I'm just going to start with dot one and then I'm going to carry this IP address to 30.15. I'm just going to end it to 254. Because this IP address is a class B IP address, so the default subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. But we have been using 255.255.255. So we will just change it to 255. So right now, don't worry about the IP address. If you don't understand it, just follow along. In the future, I will make a video about IP addresses. So right now, I will just click on Next. On the next screen, we are given the option to exclude IP addresses. So for devices like servers, like printers, like maybe wireless asset point, you know, router, all of those devices that provide services on your network, you do not want them to have 
an automatic address. You want it to always use a static IP address or an IP address that you manually assign to those devices. So I'm going to put a list of IP addresses here. So the DSCP server will not use these IP addresses to assign them to any device or our network because these are on the exclusion list. So I'm going to start with the same IP address range, 172.30.15. I'm going to start with dot one because if we can remember dot one is the server IP, so I want to exclude that IP. So I'm just going to exclude that. So I will go up to 30 and I will click on add. So after clicking on add, we have the range of IP addresses that will be excluded from automatic assignment. And then we click on next. By default, the DSCP server gives an IP address to a DSCP client on what is referred to as lease. So the default is eight days that the client can use that IP address before requesting for a new IP address. So we'll just keep it to the default and we will click on next. Again, we have the option because when you set up the DSCP scope, the DSCP scope will not automatically starts to function unless we activate it. So this option, if we keep it to yes, it means the scope will be active. And if we keep it to no, we can later on activate the scope. So on purpose, I'm going to put it to no so I can show you how you can manually activate the scope. And then I will click on next. And then, of course, it tells us a summary of everything that is going to happen. I will just click on finish. So when we click on finish, it completes that. And when we look at the status of our DSCP scope, we see the status is set to inactive. And then you will notice that there is a little red on the folder of the scope. That tells us that this scope is inactive. So in order to activate the scope, then we can click on the scope and go to action. And then we say activate. Or we can just right click on it and also click on activate. So I will just click on activate and then it will activate the scope. And then you would notice that the rare little thing that was on the folder has disappeared. If I click on IPv4, it tells us now that the status of the scope is active. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to head over to my Windows 11 client computer and then set up my Windows client computer to receive an automatic IP address from the DSCP server just to test and make sure that everything is working as a shoe. So I will head over to my Windows 11 client by clicking on it on the left. And then I can come to the network properties down here in the left and right click on it and click on network and internet settings. That's one way I could do that. Another way I can do that is to click on start and then click on settings and then I can come to network and internet and click on it. And then I can come to properties of my internet. And then it is right now set to manual IP address because this is what we did in the previous video before joining this computer to the domain. I can come to edit. I can go and set it to receive an IP automatically. So that's the second way we could do that. A third way we can do is to click in the search or click on the start. Either way works. And we just type ncpa.cpl and we click on, on that. It's going to open. Or a fourth way is to just come to run and then type in the ncpa.cpl and run. And tap ncpa.cpl and press OK or Enter. And it's going to just automatically bring us to the network settings. And we can just double click this. And then we can come to properties. And then we will head down to 
internet protocol version 4 and we will click that option and we'll click on properties again so instead of having our ip address set up manually we will change that to obtain an ip address automatically so i'm going to change it to that as well as change the dns to getting an ip address automatically as well so i'll set that to that and i will click on ok and then i will click on close and then when i click on details i will see if i can get an ip address okay so right now it says dscp is enabled but then it's giving me an ip address of 192.168 so i know that this is not coming from a dscp server it is rather coming from my home router. So I'm just going to click on close. I'm going to disable and then double click to re-enable. And I will see if I can get it from the DSCP server. Click on details. Okay, so I see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the network settings of my VMware so that it doesn't communicate with my home network. So I'm going to right click on my Windows client computer and I'm going to go to settings and I will click on network adapter and I will come to custom network and I will just keep it to the first one VM net zero. I will click on OK and I will come to my Windows server, right click on it and go to settings and put that also to the same. So I'll go to the network adapter and choose it to custom and keep it to the VM and net zero and click on OK just so that both of them are on the same network and they are not communicating with my host computer. So I'm going to go to details. So now what I can do is I can come to search and touch CMD and press enter. And this is a good exercise because it will allow us to do some things. So I can say IP config. Again, just follow along. In future videos, we will go into more details about this. But I'm trying to relinquish the IP address of my Windows 11. So I will type IP config space forward slash release and press enter. My computer is going to release the IP address. And then I will press the up arrow and and say change it from release to renew and i'll press enter and then when you look after renewing we see now that we have an ip address of 172.30.15.31 so now our computer is getting an ip address from the dscp server and we can confirm whether indeed it is getting an IP address from the DSCP server. So we will head back to our server 2022 that has our DSCP services installed on it. And then we'll come back to our DSCP window here and we will come to address leases. So you click on that and we can see that we have an IP address that has been assigned. So we have 172.30.15.31 has been assigned and we can see the host name of the computer that has that address, which is our window 11 client 01. And then it tells us when that lease, like we said, the DSCP server gives IP address based on lease. So that lease is going to expire on the 20th of March, 2024, at 6 a.m. And then it tells us that it's a DSCP address. So we can see that our Windows client computer did indeed got the IP address from our DSCP server. So again, that was good that we did experience that, that my client computer was getting an IP address from my home router instead of getting an IP address from the DSCP server. So I just had to change the network settings so that both the server and my client computer can be on the same virtual network. So they will just communicate between themselves. And now they have nothing to do with my home network. 
because on my home network, I also have a DSCP server that is on my router that is automatically gives out IP addresses. So as we can see, that's how we can install a DSCP server role on a Windows Server 2022, and then how we can set up our first DSCP scope. And then on a client computer, all you are doing is just changing your network properties to set it to automatic. And once you do that, your client computer will automatically obtain an IP address from the DSCP server. As we can see, when we click on network and internet, and we come to properties, it tells us that our IP address came automatically through DHCP, and then also our DNS information as well came through the DHCP. So that brings us to an end of today's video. So if you enjoyed today's video, kindly make sure to like the video, and also if you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. I will make sure to address those questions or if you have any suggestion of videos that you want me to make, you can also leave those in the comment section below. But make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel. And make sure to share this video with someone who is on the same journey as you trying to learn IT and would like to know more about Windows Server 2022 administration. But without further ado, I will say take care and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.